Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 7, Episode 9. This is from 2020. So this is it, the semifinals. Let's get started. And if you would, please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe. So many people watch and don't subscribe, and boy, that made my day. All right, so let's look at our finalists. Now, this is, I consider this the most exciting episode because we've watched the journey up until this point. There have been eight episodes before now, and so we have the winner from each one of those episodes. And it's a very varied field, but we also know it's gonna be that everybody's a good painter, so that makes this episode particularly fun. And remember, art is extremely subjective. So what we just saw was the self-portrait of artist number one, whose name is Curtis. And alongside that is the portrait that he did that, got, that won his episode. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm showing the portraits that they did to enter the program, uh, their submissions in other words, and then the painting that they did that had them move forward in the process. And I'm a big fan of all these painters, but I'm also a big fan of many of the painters who were left behind, and one in particular who I'm hoping to interview in about a week. And each one of these people, each one of these people that I approach to be interviewed is just so lovely and so generous. There's something about the art community that is just, just the best, you know, just, just, just the best of the best. They all understand the struggle is real. So this is a painter who I, I enjoy quite a bit. There's a certain energy and, um, boy, I really love the composition of her self-portrait there. And, you know, in terms of perspective, getting that, that front hand is, is so much larger. Um, here's a real, real gem of a painting. I, I was not as big a fan of her work during the program, but boy, when I saw the self-portrait, I thought, oh, oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I want to definitely want to see more from her. And this was a self this and there's the portrait that she did that got her onto the um the finals. And and I loved her reaction when she got onto the finals. I mean, she was just absolutely stunned and overwhelmed and uh I mean, you you can't fake that reaction. That's that's the real deal. Just absolutely thrilled. So uh, I am looking forward to seeing what she can do today. And I understand what a nerve-wracking day this would be. Oh my gosh. Uh, the, the, you remember, if you're on this program, you cannot tell your friends that you're doing this. So it all has to be done under the veil of secrecy. And I cannot imagine not being able to, you know, call my best buddy and say, um, oh, I'm nervous, you know, help my inner child. What am I going to do? So there's, there's a lot of, I would think there's a lot of hidden stress that we don't know about. So hats off to all these painters and they must be extremely motivated to do this process because, you know, to some extent it's thankless, but, um, um, but on the other hand, it, it is a program that can change your life and certainly brings a broader, broader audience to your work. So again, we were looking at the self-portraits followed by the painting that got them into the finals that were semifinals that we're about to see. And from the semifinals, they will pick three finalists who will go on to the next episode. And only one of those people will go on to be Portrait Artist of the Year 2020. And they will do a final commission. And I, I you know... <laughs> So there's still a road ahead, you know, there's still a road ahead. And yet there's been a lot of painting accomplished and, and already a lot of experience gained. Now, in this particular episode, there is no crowd behind them. Unlike in the past, where there've been distractions of the crowd milling around while you're painting. And so this is, this is a much quieter, oh no, now that I think of it, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. This is a quieter space. It's the same space that they normally film in, I believe, but there will be no actual live people watching them paint. So it's, it's a quieter environment, and also it's got to be um, less hot, you know, in terms of television lights. There's more space to spread out. So, so I suspect, given that, it just might be a little bit easier at the same time, it's harder because you are in the semifinals. So once again, we continue to look at the self-portraits, followed by the painting that got them 
into this position. And you can see there's a great variety. I mean, there's a great variety of styles. There's a great variety of ages and presentations. And so I, you know, the judges talk about that all the time, that, that, that that's what they want. They want variety and they want new voices. And I have a hunch about who's going to win this program. But as I say in all my recaps, hashtag Joe is always wrong. Um, I'm going to be really honest with you. Usually I don't peek ahead to see what's been going on, but I did peek ahead. And uh, uh, yes, I am very surprised. So, but we'll talk about that when we get to the end of this particular episode. Uh, because it is... Uh, uh, for me, it's a, it can be a sensitive subject because art is completely subjective and everybody's point of view is included. It, it should always be an incredibly inclusive environment. At the same time, we're sharing information and always wanting to be better at what we do. I think we all share that. So now we are about to finish seeing all of the possible contestants. And so let's look at our model today. Today, there is only one model and she is Bernadine Evaristo, I believe, and she is an author and I guess a very well-known author. So she had these, they put these books that somehow were floating in space behind her and I thought that was really interesting. It was just beautiful to look at. Um, as well as the coloring that she had in her shirt. I, I just thought, oh, wow, this is this is really fun. So f four hours in, but it probably isn't, but theoretically four hours on task, and now the artists turn their easels around and we get to see what they have done. And she is going to pick one of these to go home, which has nothing to do with the final judging, but it's very much an honor to be chosen. So this is, I believe, a watercolor, and I do have a channel um, well, if you're watching this, then you probably know I have a channel where I've started to do these recaps, but it also is a channel called The Watercolor Coach. So I am a watercolor painter, although I, I learn, I learn uh, so much from watching all kinds of ways of applying paint, and I do tend to paint more. I've been told I paint like an oil painter, but this is a watercolor, and we seldom see watercolors, and I just think it's an absolute gem of a painting. And so, but we can also see it's a very small size, and this artist always painted in a small size, which I don't have a problem with at all. Uh, I, you know, uh, maybe you know the Mona Lisa is a very, very small painting. So um, to me, size doesn't matter, and I don't mean that as a joke. And now the next one up, here's our next contestant, really, really captured, almost like a whimsy that she has in her expression. And even... Um, Evelyn commented that that was the case, that she, she felt that, that this really captured her, her personality and the way she saw herself. So that's kind of nice. You know, you always want to hear that from someone who's, who's been sitting for you. So that's two that we've seen so far. Here's the next one. Also, excellent, excellent likeness. Beautifully done. Not labored in any way absolutely resembles her and I think when we pull back we'll see a little bit more of that flash of green going on in the lower right hand corner and so you know I'm always looking for the use of complementary colors there's actually quite a bit of burnt sienna and orange and red in this painting so to have a really rich uh, green like an emerald green to balance it against that you know, will make your, your oranges and your reds even more impactful if you can put a complementary color nearby. It, it's, just, it's just a phenomena of what color will do. If you use opposites on the color wheel, they will enhance each other and actually have more impact than they would coming directly out of the tube, which is sort of miraculous. It's all, it really is all an optical illusion especially since, you know, you're, you're putting down paint on a flat surface and recreating a, a for, forms that are rounded. This is a much larger painting than, um, than we've seen so far. So that's, that's a lot to cover. And um, I, think, I think the sitter liked this painting very, very much. 
So let's see what happens when we pull back. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful job. And I, I like when you can see brush strokes. I, I enjoy that. I like when something announces what it is. You know, a painting is a painting. And so you can see the brush strokes. Or, or even when in our homes, you know, when you have something made of stone and it, it really is stone, not plastic made to look like stone, it just it has a more realness to it. Uh, I really enjoy the, uh, what this person did in terms of letting the, the canvas show through. But they primed the canvas with a blue a blue behind that is going to make those oranges that are in the skin, you know, oranges, burnt sienna, um, much more vibrant. Yeah, I really like the composition of that as well. I always like to see a figure anchored in. And I really, oh, oh, and yes, this is the artist who works on wood panel. That's the most coverage of the wood panel he's done. Although I guess when I look really closely, I can see where the wood panel has shown through. So he tends to use that wood panel as a, a, a tone. Yeah, there we go. Now you can really see the wood panel. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful job, though. I I had him pegged as probably the winner. Um, hashtag Joe is always wrong. Um, the minute he showed up in his episode, but uh, but as you will see, that is not the case. And if you haven't watched the program yet, you know, this, this recap is full of spoilers, so I don't want to ruin it for you. Here's our next one. Uh, this person has always painted sparingly and left a lot of canvas unfinished. And she do, did that in her self-portrait as well. And I looked ahead. I can't remember if it, I think it might be season nine where I, she comes back and I think does extremely well. So um, I'm going to keep my eye on her. Although from for me in the United States, I only get episodes one through nine and I think they're currently on episode uh, I mean season 11 so um, so I'm, I'm gonna I have to, I'm trying and trying trying to figure out how I can how I can get my hands on on some of these new on the newer series but so far I'm coming up with nothing so that is let's see yes that is our oh no we still have a couple more participants because we have eight all together so this is the next one and oh boy i really like this one too and the books floating in the distance nice job let's come in close again beautiful i you know how are they ever going to decide who should go forward all these people deserve to go forward oh gosh i just realized in talking to somebody that that this has become my my sporting event oh i re okay yes yes i remember her she had that exquisite self-portrait yeah, nicely done. And here's our last participant who's known for these very squiggly lines that he builds up and to create forms. And for me, um, it doesn't create enough form, but that, that's, that's me. And, um, and that might just be the difference between mediums. You know, I'm looking for, port I have to always remember it's portrait artist of the year, not portrait painter of the year so um you know we really haven't had any have we had any winners that aren't painters not that i know of yet anyway bernadine is going to pick one and let's see which one she picks to take home okay she picks this one yay that's a huge honor to be picked so i'm thrilled for her now we get into the absolute final judging the final judging is going to bring three of these artists into what is going to be the next episode, which will be the final episode of the season. So this must be incredibly nerve wracking. So you spent all day, I mean, at this point, four hours have been spent on painting, but there's been a lunch break. There've been interviews and interruptions in between. So it's probably more like an eight hour day. Plus you had to uh, drive or, or find transportation to get there, stay somewhere unfamiliar for you overnight must be so disorienting so here is our here are the three that, that were selected so we saw the painting that they did today and then the painting that they did their self-portrait on the left and the painting that won their episode on the right so we can certainly see a strong consistency with his work he he you know i think if you saw a piece of his work you would know right away that it was his you know he's a signature style 
Now here's the next semi-finalist. Um, beautiful job again today. And she just radiates such joy. There's something about her that is just, I guess, really expressive. And here's the painting that she did today. Uh, again, absolutely beautiful job, impeccable. I, I don't know what the judges are looking for that, that they can't find in that image, but that will always be a mystery to me. And now we get a chance one more time to see the painting that she did that got her through her episode and onto these semifinals. Yeah, really nice job. And again, really good consistency of style and palette as well. So I'm pretty sure if I saw a piece of her work, I, I think I would know it was hers as well. Now this is the painter that works on wood, so that makes it somewhat of a signature to style. He, he covered way more of the wood this time than he has in the past. Uh, so I would recognize his work right away. And like I said, I had him pegged as a winner, but, uh, but that may very well not be the case. We are going to, well, we won't find out. We just know these are our finalists who are gonna go on to the next episode. And the next episode, these three will paint uh, against each other and one will be selected to do the final commission. The final commission is going to be a painting of a very famous dancer, Carlos Acosta. So that will be exciting. So stay tuned. Uh, and thanks for taking this journey with me. Remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color, and join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.